Hey, welcome to the Rugged Truth Podcast. I am Dr. Brian Fergus, and I am so glad that you are a part of our conversation today. Whether you're watching us on YouTube or you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, welcome. We are so glad that you are here. I know I say this practically every time we have a conversation, but today's conversation is super important. And I'm going to prove that to you by just going ahead and telling you about the question that we're going to wrestle with. The question that we're going to attempt to answer during our time together today is this. How can I forgive someone who has really hurt me? It's a big question, isn't it? And it's a question that we've all wrestled with. Uh, I know I say this practically every time uh, we have one of these conversations, but our goal here at the Rugged Truth Podcast is to answer real questions that real people are asking about real life with God. And I can't think of a realer question than this one. How are we supposed to forgive the people who hurt us? I've been asked this question so often uh, during my time as a pastor or a professor uh, on the university level or the, the seminary level. Why do I get this question so often? Why, why are people uh, curious about you know, this, this uh, obligation we Christians seem to have to forgive the people who have hurt us. And, and I think the answer to that question uh, really lies in the fact that, that the need to forgive or the, the experience of uh, being wounded and being asked to forgive is, a, is kind of a universal experience, right? We, we all struggle with this issue. We've all been hurt by someone to some degree, it's not something that just a few of us have, have dealt with. And so when we get hurt, we, we wrestle with uh, how we're supposed to handle the emotions that come from that offense or from those injuries, whether they're emotional, psychological, or physical. How are we supposed to, to deal with that, with all of those emotions? You know, uh, some of us get angry when we get injured, and that's... I think a a normal emotional response to being injured by someone in in whatever way. Some of us, you know, hold on to that anger and it turns into bitterness. For some of us, that anger turns into sorrow, deep depression, maybe even fear as we are concerned about putting ourselves in a position where we are potentially going to be injured Again, those are just a few of the emotions, right, that, that we experience when someone has injured us. And then as if dealing with that wasn't enough to handle. On the other hand, because we're Christians, we're told that we need to forgive the perpetrator who hurt us. How? It's definitely easier said than done. And that, that's what I believe, just from personal experience and also pastoral experience. It is easier to f- say, tell someone, you know, oh, you just got to forgive that person than to actually do it. And, and maybe you've been on the receiving end of that advice. You've, you've uh, been injured by someone and you share that, that uh, tough emotion you're dealing with, maybe the bitterness that you're dealing with, and they say, well, you know, you're just going to have to get over it and forgive them. And, and you just want to say, how? How do I make that happen? This is something that we all struggle to wrap our minds and hearts around. It's a universal condition that we deal with, this call to forgive. And there's a lot of confusion, I think, about what forgiveness really is. And so uh, today, we're going to try to come to peace with that, right? Uh, some of that confusion comes from uh, you know, how we're supposed to respond to that person uh, from that point on out. I mean, does forgiving someone mean that I have to like them again? Does forgiving someone mean that I have to be willing to put myself in a position where they can hurt me in the same way again? I mean, think about it. 
Let's say you've gone into business with someone and then they've embezzled all the money and cheated you out of your efforts. Does forgiving that person mean that you have to go into business with them again? This is a confusing subject. And, and, and so, what I, like I said, what I want us to try to do is to come to peace with what it means to forgive, with this call that we have as Christians to forgive. And we're going to follow a, a simple agenda, a simple strategy, so that we don't get overwhelmed in all of the whatabouts uh, of this conversation. First, here's what we're going to do. We're going to see that we really are called to forgive the people who hurt us. It's not optional. We Jesus commands us to forgive people whether we want to or not. We're going to have to come to terms with that as believers. Second, we're going to look at forgiveness from God's side of things. Let me explain what I mean by that. So, so God, we know this about God, right? God is very forgiving and merciful, long-suffering, compassionate, all of those things. He's, he's the master forgiver. How does he do it? We're going to look at some passages that talk about how God forgives us. And, and, and not only are, going to, are we going to receive comfort from the fact that we've been forgiven, we're also going to look at God's model of forgiveness, how he does it. And see if we can learn anything about forgiving others from that model. And then third and final, we're going to land on uh, what I think is a very workable definition of forgiveness and some practical steps that we can take to begin to answer this call that God has given us to forgive those who have injured us. So that's what we're going to do. We better get started with this started with it. First of all, let, let's just recognize that it's clear that God has called us Christians to forgive people who hurt us. I mean, that, that, that's obviously clear. What I want us to do is um, go to two what I call ground zero passages where Jesus himself commands us to forgive people. Not only does he call us to forgive, he commands us to forgive people. And the first ground zero passage that I want us to go to is in Matthew chapter 18. I already have my Bible opened to that passage. And this is a conversation that the apostle Peter has with Jesus, right? While he's following Jesus during Jesus's earthly ministry, Peter comes to Jesus and asks him a question. And here's the question. Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times, or 70 times seven, depending upon your translation of the scriptures. This is the English standard version. Why the confusion? Ah, Greek numbers at that time were represented by letters, and so sometimes there's some, you know, what exactly is, is being communicated uh, there. But, but one of the things I want you to know is that um, while this seems like super weird to us that Peter would ask this question, Peter actually comes to Jesus thinking that he's being extra generous and extra magnanimous with his, with his forgiveness. You know, we might look at this and think, what, is Peter walking around with a clipboard? You know, Thomas stepped on my toe. That's one strike. You know, oh, my wife burnt the toast. That's another strike, right? Because we do know that Peter was married, right? We hear about Jesus healing his mother-in-law. Paul mentions his wife, not by name, but, but we get this idea that Peter was married. And so, um, what is he, just going to forgive his wife seven times? That's going to be kind of a, a weak perhaps short-lived marriage. Um, But he thinks he's being magnanimous or generous. Why does he think he's being so generous? Well, it's because of this. In Peter's day, the rabbis taught that you only really had to forgive someone three times. That's right, three strikes and you're out. And so he comes to Jesus and he says, what do you want me to Forgive people seven times. I'm willing to go seven. You know, the requirement is three. I'm willing to go seven. And then Jesus blows all of that out of the water. He's like, seven times? What are you, nuts? 77 times. 
or, or 70 times 7. Clearly, the math isn't the issue. The point is this. Jesus is telling us to forgive people who hurt us as often as it is necessary. Maybe another way to state it would be this. Jesus is telling us to forgive others as often as we get hurt. Keeping track, keeping score of the offenses that we've suffered is not the issue according to Jesus. What's important is having this forgiving heart. Now, before we kind of go into the whatabouts with that passage, let's go to another ground zero passage where Jesus commands his followers to forgive. And and quite frankly, this one to me is a little scarier and more overwhelming than the one that we just read. And this happens, or this uh, passage is in uh, the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus says this right on the heels of his uh, Lord's Prayer, right? He's teaching his disciples how to pray, and he says, you know, uh, forgive our debts as often, you know, as we forgive our debtors. And then he says this in verse 14, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. That is some pretty heavy stuff. What does it even mean? Uh, Does it mean that that my eternal destiny, my uh, relationship with God is completely dependent upon my ability to forgive people who have hurt me, because um, that could be a pretty tall order, right? Uh, some of the offenses that we've experienced, some of the hurts that we've endured are, are pretty huge. Does my eternal forgiveness from God depend upon my ability to forgive other people? That's not really the point of what Jesus is saying in that passage. You know, it's not beyond Jesus to use the figure of speech hyperbole, which is an exaggerated statement to make a point. The point that Jesus is making is really pretty clear. Listen, if you are willing to receive forgiveness from God, then you need to be willing to extend God's forgiveness to others. This isn't just a one-way street where you receive, you receive, you receive. You have to be willing to forgive others as well. In fact, in that Matthew 18 passage, Jesus will go on to tell a parable about an unforgiving servant who was forgiven much by the king or his master, but wouldn't forgive little to someone else. And so the the, the, the master then throws the unforgiving servant into jail. This is God's attitude toward his command to us to forgive other people. Listen, if we are going to readily and freely accept the forgiveness of God, and we all want that, right? If we're going to if we're going to receive God's forgiveness, Jesus is telling us we must be willing to give the same kind of forgiveness to other people. So here's the bottom line of those two ground zero passages. We must forgive people. It's not optional. It's not whether we feel like it or, you know, if it's a small offense or a big offense. No, we must forgive people, okay? But we're not done, okay? Just, just understand that what we've established is that we're called to forgive others. And we've seen that. We've seen that we're called to forgive people, but what does that look like, right? How do we understand this forgiveness that God is commanding us to extend. God provides us examples of this with his own forgiveness. Uh, Let me just take you to two what I think are really familiar passages that provide us with pictures of what God's forgiveness looks like. And then we can take some, uh, you know, examples from God's forgiveness away from those. A couple familiar passages. The first one is uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. You might have heard this before. The Apostle John writes, If we confess our sins, he, that's God, 
is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In other words, he, he makes us clean and new all over again. God will cleanse us from that sin. And, and to just you know make a long story short, what, what the apostle is getting at there is simply this. God won't hold that sin against us forever. He won't count it against us anymore. We're cleansed. There's a new start. He's not going to hold us accountable or hold that sin against us or count it against us from here on out. There's another passage that communicates a similar idea, but there's just a little tweak. And this one is found in Psalm 103. This is a Psalm of David who uh, was praising God for the forgiveness that he extends because God, David had a lot of things that needed to be forgiven, like all of us, right? And he says this in Psalm 103, starting with verse 12, As far as the east is from the west, so far does he, God, remove our transgressions or sins from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. I love this. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far God removes our sins from us. He removes our sins from us completely and has compassion on us like a compassionate father. Now, you know that there are a lot of other Bible passages that talk about God's forgiveness of our sins. But I think these two give us a really clear idea of what God's forgiveness is. When God forgives us, he doesn't hold us accountable for our sins any longer. He lets that go. He doesn't hold a grudge against us. He, he dismisses the due punishment because Jesus took that punishment for us on the cross. Amen? And that, that's the gospel message. And so now that we've seen that we are commanded to forgive others, and now that we've seen what it looks like for God to actually forgive us, let's, let's do our best to figure out what forgiveness actually is and how we can exercise it or uh, practice it in our lives. I think at this point we can land on a definition that'll make sense to us. We've seen that God doesn't hold our sins against us. We've seen that uh, our forgiveness of people who hurt us needs to be a reflection of God's forgiveness of us. That's what Jesus requires of us. And so I think we've arrived at definition time, all right? And I'm going to keep this like super simple because I want it to be very practical for you. And here it goes. Forgiving others means not holding grudges or seeking revenge against those who hurt us. I'm going to say it again because I don't want you to miss it. Forgiving others means not holding grudges or seeking revenge against those who hurt us. Instead, we trust God to deliver justice, not revenge. We've, we've talked about that before on the Rugged Truth podcast. But we trust God to deliver justice, and then we leave that up to him. That's what Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 9, where uh, he, he quotes uh, the Old Testament where uh, it said, uh, forgiveness is mine, says the Lord, or I'm sorry, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. And then we're encouraged to leave room for the wrath of God. In other words, don't get in the way of taking revenge on people. Leave that to God. Let God administer justice. And so when God commands us to forgive, all he's really commanding us to do is to give up the right for revenge and let God sort that all out. Rather than taking the law into our own hands, when we recognize that we've been hurt by someone, we turn that over to the Lord 
We relinquish our right to seek revenge, and we ask God to do the right thing. We, we leave justice up to him. We relinquish or refuse the right to take revenge, and we let God sort it out. We grant that responsibility to him. We don't take it for ourselves, because if we do, our emotions are going to get involved, and chances are pretty good we're going to go over the top. So, so what does this look like? If forgiveness is really giving up the right to take revenge and letting go of the grudge that accompanies that, that desire, what does this actually look like in our lives? That's the big question, right? Because now we're talking about how do we practice forgiveness. And, and that's super important. Uh, you know, the goal of our conversations here, the, the goal of, of any Bible study is not just to fill our heads with knowledge, it's to ch- change our lives. The goal of Bible study is a changed life. And, and we've spent time talking about forgiveness now, so what does that look like for us, practically speaking? What does forgiveness look like? That's an important question to answer. Let's recognize something. Forgiveness, as we're talking about it today here, is mostly an internal action, right? Because we're talking about dealing with the emotions that we experience when someone hurts us. And all of that happens inside here, right? Um, And so our part in forgiveness is to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to deal with these negative emotions that we're going to face when other people hurt us, the negative emotions of being injured or hurt by others. And so I think there are three practical steps that we can take that will help us, you know, obey this command to forgive people. And and, and all of these action steps that we can take happen in the arena of prayer right? Because forgiveness makes sense. Because forgiveness is internal. It's, it's something that needs to happen in our hearts and in our minds. And so here are three practical action steps we can take to obey to begin this process of forgiveness. And the first one is this. Tell God about the offense and tell him how you feel about it. It's important when we're injured wounded emotionally, physically, psychologically, to just be honest with God and say, God, this happened, not okay with it. I'm really angry. I'm upset with this person. I, I, I think that was a trashy thing to do. And I'm really, really hacked about it. It's okay to get that out there and talk to God about it. So tell God about the offense and how you feel about it. Second of all, Ask God to deal with the offense. Ask him to do the right thing. Lord, you saw what happened. You know how I feel about it. Please do the right thing. Do the thing that needs to be done to make this wrong right. And know that he will, right? He promises that. We saw, and we alluded to that from Romans 12. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. He's going to make it right. So tell God about the offense and how you feel about it. Ask him to deal with it in the right way. And here's the third one, and this is the hard one. Pray for your enemies. Pray for your enemies. We we, we can't get through the Gospels without seeing Jesus tell us to do this very thing. In Matthew, I'm sorry, in Luke chapter 6, verse 27 Jesus himself says, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who abuse you. Pray for those who abuse you. You've been hurt by someone. The Lord says, pray for them. Let me tell you why that makes sense. Let me tell you why it makes sense to to pray for the people who hurt us, because that's the part of letting go of the grudge. Remember, we forgiveness is relinquishing the right, giving up the right to take revenge. We've asked God to do the right thing instead. We still have these negative emotions, this grudge. God knows, Jesus knows, that if we begin to pray for this person, 
then that grudge will start to gradually go away. And you might be thinking, yeah, I'll pray for them. I'll pray that they get hit by a bus. No, that's not what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about praying good things for them. If they need to come to the Lord, praying that they are introduced to the Lord. If they need to be wound, uh, healed of their internal wounds that might be fueling some of their bad behavior, then we need to pray for that, right? There's that old adage, hurt people hurt people. And so maybe we need to pray that their hurts would be healed so that they would stop hurting others. Three steps that we can practice to begin uh, this process of being the forgiving people that the Lord has asked us to be. Uh, tell God about the offense and ask him, uh, and tell God about the offense and tell him how we feel about it. Ask him to do the right thing with it and pray for those who have hurt us. Now, I realize that we haven't answered all the questions about forgiveness. There's still a lot of questions to be answered. And so this conversation about forgiveness needs a part two. And so this is the, the first uh, conversation in uh, the history of the Rugged Truth podcast, where this is part one. Part two will come out next week, where we talk about uh, what forgiveness is not. Because that's where I think most people get confused. They, they, they get wadded up on what forgiveness is not. And we'll answer all of the whatabouts and really come to terms with this command that the Lord gives us to forgive. And so we'll talk about that in the next episode of the Rugged Truth Podcast. For now, we should pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your word and for the time you've given us to open it and to consider this tough issue of forgiving those who have hurt us. We pray that you would be uh, alive in us through your Holy Spirit and open us to obeying the command that you've given us to forgive those who have hurt us. Lord, we want to tell you about the things that have happened to us and tell you how we feel about them. And we want to ask you to handle them correctly. And Lord, please move us through your Holy Spirit to pray for our enemies so that we can begin to let go of those grudges. We ask all of this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Well, amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us in this conversation. As always, I'm going to ask you to please like this YouTube video, like this podcast, subscribe to our YouTube and podcast channels. We want to get the word about the Rugged Truth podcast out there as much as we possibly can. Share these uh, videos and podcasts with the people that you love. They need this information too. God bless you. We'll see you very soon. Thank you.